I've heard the statistic that half of all the solar panels ever produced on the planet are in use in Germany. The thing is, where are they? <laughs> Now, very often when I talk about renewable energy, I often use Germany as an example. I say, well, in Germany, they, they do loads of renewables, but I don't actually know exactly how much. So I've come here to find out. So, Dr. Kirker, we, we've, uh, in England, we hear all the time about how much renewable energy Germany generates and how much you're so far ahead of us. Is there a policy to push in that direction? Mm. What we basically did, we created a reliable framework for the feed-in of renewable energies into the grid, and um, this is paid by the consumers. So the, um, the network operators pay it to the people who feed it in, and then they um, distribute the, the additional costs to the consumers. And we had a real breakthrough for photovoltaics because what we predicted in the beginning, that if we have a stable framework and if we can get economies of scale, then the prices will come down. Right. So what happened, that many more were installed than we had actually predicted. Because then, of course, the profits you can make with a fixed tariff are, are much higher. And so that could now increase the consumers' prices. So we're drastically reducing the feed-in tariff. But still the panels are being installed because they have become pretty cheap and we do think that um, having this feed-in tariff law in Germany helped to actually create the photovoltaics boom that we're having in the world and actually created the breakthrough for photovoltaics and I think that's a very important example how innovative creative politics can actually influence things in the economy, in the, in the real world, very strongly. Do you know what the greatest percentage of energy from which sector it comes from, whether it's wind or solar? It's wind. Or if, if we're talking about electricity, it's wind, because um, photovoltaics are still pretty expensive compared to wind, so the, the, the bulk of energy production is in wind. And the next step we are taking is that we're creating large offshore um, wind parks. And when we say offshore, that's like in front of the coast, that's really in front of the coast. That's so you can sit on the beach and look at the horizon see. and you don't yeah. see them, which is important for tourism, of course. Yeah. Is the long-term aim then of the German government and the German people to be 100% renewable. It's, it's quite a challenge. We're getting rid of nuclear and we are also slowly, slowly phasing out coal, having a bit more gas, of course, and um, trying to reach 80% in electricity by 2050. And that is, uh, uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's the renewable energy and so the, the two pillars of our energy concept except are really renewable energy and energy efficiency. So that, is that the primary thing, is to, is to stop burning coal? Is that the main Well, aim? and and also, which is different from, from the situation in, in the United Kingdom, to, to also get away from, um, from nuclear power. Yeah. Because we still have some nuclear uh, power and we'll phase it out by the end of um, 2022. Right. So we, after Fukushima, we closed down the oldest power stations and um, then we'll continue phasing them out and we're definitely not going to build any new ones. Yeah. So Are you aware of, or do, can you see any kind of, uh, as yet, um, uh, uh, undiscovered sources of renewable energy or, or new, new concept? Um, I think the, the innovation that we need is uh, storage. And also the other great challenge is to um, expand the grids and to make the grids more intelligent. So like if you have a, a Europe-wide interconnected grid, then the question of storage even becomes less important because you can say, I mean, we have had modeling about that. Somewhere you always have wind, somewhere mm. the sun's always shining. So if you have a more interconnected grid, um, the question of fluctuating renewables becomes um, less problematic. So grid is a very important factor as well. Next stop was Leipzig to see German energy policies at work. So 
but I mean, this place is just so enormous. I've never mm -hmm. seen anything remotely as big. Is it, is it the biggest solar PV plant in the world? Um, no, it was the biggest one uh, when we finished the first part in 2008 with 40 megawatt. At that time, it was, that for, was the biggest. It was the biggest right. one. A lot of countries uh, develop big um, photovoltaic uh, parks, and uh, I think we are now at the moment belong the 15th first right. biggest one. So then, all the electricity that this is generating at mm -hmm. the moment is, is that does that just go into the the grid, the whole of the German grid? Exactly. We have a transformer station nearby only for this PV plant, right. and uh, especially for the the old plant, the 40 megawatt plant, we go to a level of 110 kilovolt. And uh, in this level, we go into the grid. That's um, a regional grid, but uh, a spreaded grid. So this, what we're driving down, is actually the runway of a of a military a airfield yep. that was dis it was disused then, presumably when you arrived. There was just nothing here except airfield and concrete. Well, until uh, 1992, uh, uh, Soviet soldiers were here. Right. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, then it was to the big question how to use this yes. after this time. And now we are very happy that we have such a big photovoltaic plant here. Yeah. Yes, it is interesting, isn't it, that this site was all about noise, war, <laughs> you know, yeah. and now it's really quiet and peaceful, and it's all about peace and, and creating energy without burning anything. Which is yeah, I think that's a good development. Yeah, it's, it's so staggering when you look down there. It is sort of like an orchard in a way. When you see go past an orchard, you see rows of trees, but this is just solar panels, and it just goes on for miles. So, so how many actual individual panels are there? Cause we have more than seven hundred thousand single panels wow. here installed. Uh, has it been positively received? Yeah, sure, because there are really no protests against the right. PV plant. And um, the city of, of Brandes uh, even get some money for for the ground. Because the installation must would be very expensive, but then yep. once it's running, there's, there's very, I presume, very low running costs. It doesn't cost a lot to keep it running on a daily basis. Well, the, the running, running costs are really very, very low because, yeah. you see, there's nearly it's Nobody working. here. It's working yeah, now. There's no one around. You don't have to do yeah. anything. Yeah. The sun is shining without the help of the people. Yes. And um, well, for the the old part, the first part of the 40 megawatt, uh, we had to pay 130 million euro. Right. Um, but at that time, uh, we got um, higher. Um, a, a, a higher uh, tariff. Uh, tariff. For how much yeah. Made, feeding right. tariff. And um, yeah, it's around about eight to ten years. Depends a little bit on right. the sunshine, of course. Right. But that's so within eight time. to ten years, you'll have, yeah. you'll have paid off the installations. So that means that, but so it, and if they, I mean, most people are saying they, the panels will last around twenty years, twenty-five years. Yeah. So you've got sort of fifteen years where you potentially make quite a lot of money, exactly. which is very yeah. useful. Exactly. Because <laughs> I've got used to my own solar panels, but now I can see it's not that much in comparison with this. So, Sylvie, this, is, this helps me because I can understand some of it. What we generated today from the very first beginning, when right. the sun came up, the sum of all energy we produce uh, since the very first beginning. We started um, in 2007 with the first um, panels um, producing power for the grid. And the last panels um, were finished in last year, right. 2011. And so it's a, just a sum from the very first beginning. Right. Uh, what we so that's the, that's the, the total you've, you've that's produced total, in total. Total amount of which, which is 175,208 megawatt, megawatt hours. hours right. Exactly. Yeah. Which sounds like a lot. So, I mean, because that's one of the figures, it, 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 it's so hard for people to, because we, we're so ignorant of electricity, it's so normal. You switch the light on, the light comes on, you don't yeah. think about it. But that represents, you know, in terms of, say, households, how many households yeah. can you produce electricity for? Well, we, uh, we cover the demand of 15,000 households, 15,000 families right. um, in yeah, Europe, Germany, right. uh, per year with this PV park. Right. 
which is a that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of houses, exactly. a lot of people. Yeah. Especially because in the uh, in this area only are small villages, right. small towns. So fifteen um, families, it's fifteen thousand families nearly, is a lot of nearly everything. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Stay tuned for part three, where we look at a house that creates more energy than it uses. Wunderbar. Right now, it's going to charge. This is a modern house, you know? Yeah. So we don't need a key anymore. We just need a phone wow. to open the door. Wow. Oh, <laughs> I want that too. That's fantastic. <laughs>